Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I want to talk about Twitter. Um, not because I have any certain feelings or think any certain kind of way about Elon Musk. I don't want to get into any of my opinions about Elon Musk, but because I think it's important as software developers that we realize what's going on here um, and also what it means for us generally. And to be quite frank, like later on in your career, um, you might serve as a manager or executive or CTO or something like that and have to make some of these difficult decisions. And as you can see here in this headline from Insider, um, Elon Musk's handling of uh, the Twitter takeover is a masterclass in how not to do it. Um, specifically, this quote comes from uh, a lawyer um, somebody who works at Harvard University, a professor who studies layoffs, Sandra Sucher. Um, and she says that this is like the worst possible way that you could reduce force and, and let everybody know about it. Uh, it's very sudden, very random, um, and super demoralizing for the entire team at Twitter. It doesn't seem to have any type of plan behind it. Uh, so it's scary times, uh, not just at Twitter, but across the industry. There's a lot of companies that are letting um, staff go. I know uh, Meta is working on a layoff right now. Currently, Amazon has announced that they're going to be laying off people. Um, so it's certainly not unique to Twitter, but Twitter is getting the most attention because of how badly it's been bungled and how much it seems like Elon Musk is trying to just sink the ship. Um, so let's talk about it. So the Twitter layoffs have been very, very chaotic, um, and it seems like there's a news story every single day. It's difficult to tell what is and isn't true or, or what actually is happening over there, um, but it seems pretty clear that they're, they messed some of these things up. Uh, the transition isn't going well. Um, so where did it start? It started with Elon Musk buying Twitter for something like $44 billion um, and then immediately firing the CEO and other executives uh, on the team. Um, so he took out the executive team, the leadership of Twitter, uh, and then installed himself as CEO and started looking for ways to save Twitter money, basically. Um, his claim here is that Twitter's losing over $4 million a day, uh, which is an impressive burn rate, but um, not entirely out of the question. Uh, so it makes sense that layoffs are happening. I'm not saying that layoffs uh, shouldn't happen or anything like that. I think companies have to make hard decisions sometimes. Um, but as we'll see, there's like some nuances to how you make those decisions and making those decisions better. So let's jump here as well. There's another news story that came out this week about uh, Twitter's work from home policy. Um, that's also gone. So uh, if you were an engineer at Twitter, you either got a pink slip and got let go last week, um, and you got fired, or you're now expected uh, to work, but to work from the office. Um, and then there's another bit to this, which is uh, that he's asked um, employees to work over 80 hours a week um, in at, at Twitter. The, the people who are still left um, are working crazy hours from the office in order to keep the lights on for the company. Um, and it's gonna it's honestly burning engineers out uh, Twitter is like just hemorrhaging talent at the moment both from the layoffs and from people who said I can't possibly work like this um, unfortunately there's like a in-between place where Twitter has a lot of engineers and other people who work there who are there working on a visa and can't uh, just quit their jobs without serious repercussions for their ability to live in the country. 
Um, and for them, it's basically a forced work situation, uh, which is not great. Um, so the work from home policy is gone. 84 hours a week is kind of the expectation of how much people should work. And then staff has been reduced. Um, there's another thing. This is actually uh, an article that I wrote, um, but there's reports as well about technical managers being expected to be to manage 20 individual contributors and also spend half their time writing code. Um, so it's not just engineers that are being affected, it's also managers, and this is just bonkers in terms of how much time uh, that takes. Uh, to write code and also to manage 20 people. Um, I think a more reasonable number of people that you might manage is like 10 or less even. Um, so double the number of people that you manage and also uh, spend half your time writing code. Um, and the result is that either managers are leaving Twitter or they're saying, uh, I, ca I can't be expected to do the jobs of of a manager anymore and they're telling their engineers like hey I can't really support you um, which is also terrible okay so what's the fallout well yeah Twitter's hemorrhaging talent obviously but they're also getting sued um, pretty majorly uh, the mass layoffs didn't come with enough warning um, according to this lawsuit um, and within the state of California you have to give employees notice of a mass layoff um, so in this case it's possible that former employees are going to win a couple a couple uh, court cases against Twitter as well um, so it's really really not going great over there um, and how did they decide to who to fire on the engineering team? Um, well, the reports say that uh, they were stack ranked by lines of code written in the last year, um, which is obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but uh, is a terrible way to rank developers. Um, as this person says, Thomas Drake, like using raw lines of code um, is a really old trope and completely misplaced. Which is true, if you measure the lines of code that an engineer has put out, uh, it tells you basically almost nothing about uh, their actual productivity and how good they are at their job. In fact, the best engineers often have very small changes uh, that they've made to the code base. Some more color on that, Molly White tweeting about um, deciding which engineers to keep around and deciding to keep the ones who wrote the most uh, is kind of silly. Um, and at her old job, engineers would sometimes have lines of code that were in the negatives, and that was a point of pride. Um, which, for me as well, I try to keep my pull requests as small as possible and keep the lines of code uh, down or remove lines of code when I can. Um, so this would be terrible. I would be, I would be fired very quickly if I worked at Twitter. Um, same types of things. Um, Google, Amazon, Facebook, definitely not counting lines of code, um, especially for higher level engineers. Um, and then the most recent kind of controversy that's happened at Twitter is that uh, Elon Musk has been talking about turning off microservices, to basically remote calls to be able to fill in the timeline or something else uh, for um, a given user and this Eric Fraunhofer is a uh, engineer at was an engineer at Twitter um, who spent the past six years kind of working on these issues um, who publicly tweeted a correction to Elon Musk and got into it um, with Elon so you can see there's a back and forth here there's a whole thread that you can read uh, later about it um, but at the end of the day, Eric Fraunhofer gets fired um, from Twitter, and 
immediately offered another job at a different company because of he clearly knows what he's talking about. Um, this is like so, so toxic to fire an employee for basically offering uh, critical feedback. I don't think Eric Fronhofer stepped over the line. You'll have to read this thread on your own, but I don't think he stepped over the line in the way that he spoke to Elon Musk, but um, it's pretty clear that Elon is just kind of making things up as he goes uh, at Twitter and um, not necessarily listening to the experts. Uh, and here's the report of him being fired um, about Twitter's culture and, and Musk's paranoia and, and whether things will, are going to crash and burn there. So um, Casey Newton has an entire uh, an entire interview with um, Eric Fronhofer about all these different questions of like, what do we think is going to happen next uh, at Twitter? And that kind of brings me... When, when Musk shut, shut down some of the microservices, uh, it also ended up shutting down two-factor authentication for Twitter users, and people got locked out of Twitter and stuff like that. So definitely not good. Uh, and like just kind of like going around uh, the service with a baseball bat, just turning things off um, randomly just to see what happens uh, is not necessarily the best way to test what's happening in your microservices. Um, but it all brings me to this point that uh, it seems like you would be hard-pressed to find a senior engineer or somebody with a good resume who wants to work at Twitter at this point. Um, it's really, really damaging for Twitter's brand. Uh, I can see how there might be some people who want to work there because it'll improve their resume or something like that. Some younger people who want to join Twitter to kind of get in on the action. Um, but I can't imagine Twitter recovering very soon from these types of terrible hits to their image um, as an organization. And Twitter was fairly well respected, um, like a great place to work just six months ago. Um, so it's really, really gone downhill. And that is the basic overview of what's happened in the past week. Um, I know that's a lot. Which parts should I dig into? Which parts are you curious to learn more about? Um, I'll add some links in the, in the notes below. But let me know what you think of the Twitter layoffs and uh, what else you want to know about.